Greetings, anime addicts and cartoon fanatics, and welcome to my list for my favorite anime of 2016. Yes, it's finally done! Well, part one. Of possibly three parts. Okay, look, I know it's nearing the end of... Insert current month here. And you've all been waiting a while for this, but I'm still not close to being done with the whole list. Like they say, life comes at you fast, and I've had a lot of hiccups and personal things occur in these first two months. But I know y'all have been waiting a long time for something animation review-wise to finally show up on this channel, so here's the first part of what I've completed so far for that list. 20 through 15. And don't fret, this isn't going to happen like last year. The rest of the list will be completed. I promise. Enjoy! Number 20. Usakame. <gasps> Usakami is a show about four girls in the tennis club where we barely see them play tennis because the show decides to instead focus on the fast-paced humor that doesn't even allow the jokes to sink in because this is a short-form series, you know, the ones with a shorter running time than other anime, only this one decides to pack in as much stuff as a normal anime to the short time slot, only it's pointless because nothing of real importance happens in this pointless anime that's apparently spun off of Tekio. What is Tekio? I have no clue. All I know is that it's made into this list for being just the oddest thing I saw this year, plus four minutes per episode, you can complete the show in less than an hour. Heck, not even that long if you skip the openings and endings. Next show, please. Number 19. The Glass Mask Year 3 Class T. Do not adjust your monitors, folks. This one is indeed a computer-generated show. The Glass Mask Year 3 Class D is another short-form series which is a spin-off based on Suzue Muichi's Glass No Common, a classic manga series from the 70s. To explain what Glass Mask Year 3 Class D... Wait a second. Year 3 Class D... Oh, uh, you little devils, you. Well, anyway, Glass Mask 3D's plot is not well explained, but from what I can make of it, it's as if the characters from Class No Common were transported to today and keep trying to keep the passionate and serious tone in the modern world, giving us awkwardly hilarious results. <laughs> the dilemmas deal with such things as when do you send a text to the one you love? Or how do you deal with the squeaky desk chair? Or the scariness of eyes going white to express shock. Yeah, the, the, the show is weird. But it's self-aware humor is what kept me watching. If you're a fan of satire comedy like that, then the Glass Mask Year 3 Class D just might be the show to reunite your passion. <laughs> Number 18. Kimetsu no Yaiba. Oji san and Marshmallow. This one, I'm not sure what to make of it. It revolves around this guy and girl who work in the office together and marshmallows. Actually, that's kind of it. It's just these co-workers who have some sort of connection over marshmallows. Yeah, episode one just confused the heck out of me. I didn't know what to make of it. This girl just seems to tease this guy with marshmallows and then really starts teasing him. She likes this guy, and he is painfully unaware of it. So the show is basically her messing with him as an attempt to flirt with him. Where this goes throughout the show, I won't say, because I don't want to give away too much. But just to give a little sample of what to expect, my favorite moment is in episode 2. He's talking on the phone with someone when she decides to give the person on the other line the wrong idea. Huh? Then she does this. I haven't laughed so hard in my life. I mean, the fact that she does this is funny enough, but just how freaking deadpan the action is, it just slays me. Trust me, the moments just get funnier and more awkward as the show goes on. It's another short form show with 12 episodes, so like I said before, you can complete it quickly, so definitely check it out. Oh, wait. There's a 13th episode? Huh, I somehow missed this. But episode 12 ended so well, so how could they continue that? Ah, 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 oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Number 17. Tabi Machi Late Show. Now before we get into this one, once again, nothing is wrong with the monitors. That frame rate is supposed to look like that. Why? I have no clue. It's as if they did the keyframes and forgot to pay their in-betweeners and just rushed the show out as is. Tommy Machi Late Show is another short form series with, with four episodes, each containing their own stories with one similar theme. 
Journeys and Goodbyes. When first starting the show, episode one didn't do anything for me. It was just a story of a cook and her, um, apprentice, I guess? Trying out food he had made and thinking about the past. Nothing really noteworthy. But the episodes past that were much better, some of which I can't really discuss due to spoilers. But the one thing that stuck with me was episode two, Transistor Smartphone. It's a story of the memories a model student, Kumano, has of a student named Koizume. She mentions how Kozume is always playing hooky and doesn't seem to have any friends. And we see a montage of Kumano watching Kozume and trying to interact with her. One day Kumano gets Kozume alone in the classroom. Kozume is, as usual, standoffish, but Kumano keeps a polite posture, always smiling. Now this is where I thought the typical cliche would happen, where something comedic would happen or Kumano would share a secret that would create a bond or something like that, but that's not what happens. Suddenly, Kozume starts verbally attacking Kumino, saying her model student persona is a fake, cutting deeper and deeper with every word as Kumino's facade starts to fade. Shouldn't あんたがいつかはじけとぶそん時まで、お友達になってあげても。こっち抜きなさいよ。な、泣くなよ。As Komeno runs off, Kozume pursues. あんたのこと多分わかんだよ。だから最初から話しかけてくれてたんじゃねえの。私と小泉さんがお話ししたのはこれが最後になりました。結局卒業してからも。彼女の言葉は棘のように刺さって抜けず私の小さな笑顔の鳥では大学を出て社会人になりわずか一年で脆くも崩れ去ってI can't explain it, but this episode, it just, it just struck a nerve with me. Maybe what we can take from the story is the line here. いつだって本当に友達になれる相手は後から気づくものなのかもしれません。I'm not gonna lie, I've thought about this as well. The people I've known in high school, those people that picked on me before, those preps who seemed to be popular with teachers while I was the loner. I have at times wondered if I should have approached the situation better. Tabi Machi Leisha may not be perfect all the way through, but at least one of these stories may just take you on the journey you need to take. Number 16. Nyanbo. So this one I got interested in by one of Crunchyroll's tweets which showcased scenes from the anime premiering. I mean look at this, it's pretty impressive. Blending 3D models in a real world environment like that, I mean I can't even tell what they were using to get the cat to pounce. That's pretty crazy. So I checked it out and of course the scene was still cool, but it was just another short form show that ends pretty really quickly after that so the credits start rolling and... That! That! That's Yotsuba! That's freaking Yotsuba! The cute Ford Pigtail girl from the manga series by the same person that gave us Ozuma Manga Dio! What is she doing here?! Well, silly me didn't put two and two together, but this is basically a spin-off based on something from Yotsuba series. Cardbo. I thought those things looked familiar. The story is basically that of these alien creatures who are like cats, but not. Their adventures are basically looking for parts of the UFO that get them back home, all while running into similar characters. And from what I can tell, the setting is all in real world. And these are some pretty darn good effects. They really feel like they're in the real world. And the little one is cute as a button. I had fun watching this, and I feel you will too. But seriously, why didn't they make a Yosuba anime? Come on, guys, you're killing me here! Number 15. She and her cat. Everything flows. Like Glass Mask 3D, She and her cat is another anime based on an earlier work. The original was an independent 5-minute Japanese anime OVA created and directed by Makoto Shinkai in 1999. I've watched it and it's... It's not much. 
A story from a perspective as a cat that looks at, to his owner like a girlfriend. Saying that out loud, it sounds like it could be interesting, but it's really just a very artsy still short that really doesn't tell or do much. So how does the 2016 adaptation, um, adapt it? Well, first off, it's in color, and they drop the whole my owner's my girlfriend thing. Or at least they make it less obvious. It's still arguably artsy, but it's far more approachable than the original, at least in my opinion. And with an overall longer running time, the story of the girl's life is better explained and explored. Her story is simple, but relatable, especially if you've ever experienced going from having roommates to suddenly living alone. The story was also expanded this time, showing that she was given the cat when she was younger and not found by her as an adult and it built a stronger connection between the cat and her. I feel the overall message of this anime is dealing with the struggle of trying so desperately to be independent that we tend to push others away in the process. I enjoyed the show overall, but I had one small complaint. Now, it's about a part of the ending, so I can't say too much about it. I'm sure some of you can guess what it is given the setup, and yes, it is in part tragic. But my complaint is that it happens so fast and is so rushed through that it barely has any impact. Heck, I didn't even realize what had happened at first. I will admit, however, one thing that happens to the girl after the fact has happened to me before, and I would be lying if I said it didn't resonate with me. She and her cat, Everything Flows, is a relaxing and simple story that makes a much-needed improvement on the original. 